We are not the aggressors in the culture war. I have had the distinction over the past two days of being condemned, not just by one, but by two American universities. Isn't that amazing? One of those universities is BU. I spoke at BU a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. I, I gave a talk and uh, the, the BU administration really tried to shut this thing down. So I had a sold out crowd and then there were people who had shown up for a, a standby line because there was some talk that there might be a kind of a walkout. Then for whatever reason, it was the police chief or the deputy police chief. There was, there was one guy, generally the people we worked with at this event were very nice and very accommodating, but there was this one dude, I think it was the deputy chief, who just wouldn't let people in, wouldn't let half the audience in, wouldn't let our photographer in. We couldn't even get photographs of the event, made the standby line disperse and, and sabotaged the event. And then at one point, a bunch of the libs in there stood up and yelled and screamed and they sort of walked out too. And then they wouldn't let anyone come back in. So it was, it was a bit of sabotage, but we at least got the, the speech out. And now the, the BU student government has just issued a formal <laughs> condemnation of me. Said we're disappointed and frustrated by the Boston University administration's allowance of a speaker who is openly transphobic and actively seeks to erode and endanger the LGBTQ community. Students express their concerns about safety and the BU administration continued to be silent and allowed for the event to occur. We fully believe in freedom of speech and, and expression. However, <laughs> there you go. There's that however. However, not for Michael. However, there is a line between free speech and hate speech that must be drawn. Okay. Obviously written by not very well-educated undergraduates. They accuse me of being transphobic. A phobia is an irrational fear of something. I don't have any fear of people who have strange sexual confusion. I certainly don't have any irrational fear of that. I'm simply making the observation that men are not women and boys are not girls and that it is wrong for a society to pretend otherwise because it's a lie and it's a delusion and it doesn't help anybody, not the people who are confused, not the rest of society that has to pretend and be made to lie. We just shouldn't tolerate that because it's just not true. Regardless of what you think about the transgender issue, my view is not the extreme one. <laughs> my view is not the, the radical one. My view that men can't secretly be women is the view held by statistically all human beings everywhere throughout the entire history of the world until five seconds ago. The view that men secretly can be women and are women and we should treat them as such, that is the extreme view. That is the radical view. That is the aggressive view in the culture war. Now, I expect this kind of thing from Boston University. BU is a liberal school in a liberal town in a liberal state. Okay, I'm, I'm not terribly surprised. But it gets even crazier because we just found out a couple of days ago that another university had invited me to speak and the school itself, the school administration preemptively shut it down. And the school was not some radical secularist school. It's not supposed to be. It was a Catholic school. And they took issue with me for holding a, the Catholic view of sex and, and gender and, the, and human nature. This school is the uh, University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. And uh, the school said, uh, this was the university and the student government, so the university leaders and the student government, said that they would not permit the student group to bring me to campus because I had made comments on transgender issues that the university had deemed were in violation of the, quote, commitment to dignity and diversity. And my, what is my comment, by the way? I, they're trying to insinuate that I'm, I'm really insulting or mean or cruel to people or that I'm calling for violence against people. I haven't done anything of the sort, of course. That's why they never cite any examples here. They just use this vague term that I'm, I'm undermining their dignity and I'm saying phobic sort of things. What is my view? What is the view that is contrary to the values of the University of St. Thomas? My view is that men and women are different and complementary. My view is the Catholic view. Where did I get my view? The catechism of the Catholic Church would be one source. If the University of St. Thomas is so shocked and offended by what I have to say, can you even imagine what will happen when they read St. Thomas? Oh boy, fellas, you're really in for something when you read St. Thomas Aquinas at the University of St. Thomas because his views 
gosh, they're even more blunt and direct and eloquent than mine are, aren't they? It's, it's always bad when conservatives are not allowed to say conservative things on campus. That's bad and sad and shows you how far the campuses have fallen. But it is especially absurd when a Catholic is not allowed to say Catholic things at a Catholic university. (laughs) But it's obviously not a Catholic university. They're admitting that now. They are saying, no, there are, between the two religions that we've got to pick, Catholicism and secular liberalism, we're going to choose secular liberalism. A man, a man cannot serve two masters, University of St. Thomas. I think they're, they're circulating a petition now to bring me to speak. I'm happy to speak. I'd like to go, you know, since the student group invited me, that would be very nice. But uh, m- much more importantly than that, whether I speak or not, I don't, I don't really care. Ultimately, I speak on lots of college campuses. What is very important here is we have to expose the administration of the University of St. Thomas. This is scandalous. The bishops should get involved because this is a Catholic university. The parents who are writing their tuition checks should get involved. This is a true scandal. If, if, the, if a Catholic university isn't going to teach basic facts about the difference between men and women, then what are they? Te- they're teaching nothing but extreme radical leftism. Now, it's dangerous for me to go to a school and say boys and girls are different. That's apparently dangerous. But when the libs are calling for the assassination of conservative Supreme Court justices, that's fine. I'm not exaggerating that, by the way. The the liberal group that sent the the mobs to the justices' homes, they did not explicitly call for physical violence. They heavily insinuated it by saying we want a diversity of tactics. Peaceful protesting is fine, but we want a diversity of tactics, okay? We want you to go to their homes where their families live. They, They were heavily insinuating it. Some blue check libs came right out and said it. There's this one guy... Simon Gwynn, you can tell he's a good person because he has the Ukraine flag in his Twitter name. He's calling to assassinate American Supreme Court justices, but he's got the Ukraine flag, so he's a good, he probably wore the mask too, so he's a good guy. Simon Gwynn, blue check mark, he says, interesting real life trolley problem in America right now. If you had the chance to kill Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, the two oldest right wing Supreme Court justices, would you, uh, should you do it while Biden can get his nominees to replace them confirmed? He then goes on and and he says, it's interesting as an abstract question, but becomes a real conundrum if, say, you're terminally ill and have little to lose yourself, but know that it could save many women's lives in the future. So he's not even saying, gosh, what should we go out and just kill the judges? I don't know. I'm just asking questions. He goes even further than that. He says, you know, especially if you don't have that much to lose, and these judges, they're killing women somehow that I'm not exactly explaining how. Should you, he's saying it, should you do the thing that I'm suggesting is a good thing and kill Supreme Court judges, says the good man with the nice flag and the blue check mark. I'm so glad you like that clip. Now, ring that bell, smash that like, click that subscribe, I don't know, whatever the lingo is. Make sure you get all the notifications. Also, head on over to the Michael Knowles Show at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play. We'll see you next time.